Hey guys, uh, it's the old bull here. Just um, doing a very quick video on how to set up a MetaMask wallet. Because if you're going to buy NFTs or crypto, um, well, crypto not so much anymore. You can do that on some of the main exchanges. But um, if you want to buy NFTs, MetaMask is definitely a really good thing to have. So let's just have a look at it. So this is the actual site where you download it. Um, so if we just come here and we type in MetaMask, all right, and click on MetaMask Wallet. So you want to make sure it's MetaMask.io. So there are scams out there where they SEO the wrong address you put in and they make a fake wallet for you. So make sure that it's MetaMask.io. All right, so you just download. Right, download the mask. Install MetaMask. Now I'm going to do it on Chrome, but you can do it on Firefox. So Chrome, Firefox, Brave browser, and Edge. All right, I use Chrome all the time. Um, I use Google like Docs and stuff and stuff on my Chrome. So it just makes much more sense for me to use Chrome, and I've had no troubles whatsoever. So install MetaMask for Chrome. All right, so once it's installed, get rid of that now. Once it's installed, you're going to end up with up here in Chrome, your little MetaMask wallet. Okay, so um, once you've got your wallet, when, you set, when you're going through the steps to actually set up the wallet, you're going to be given a 12 word phrase or a set of words. They're random words, it's like tree bush, um, apple, car, factory, happy, they're just all random words. So um, this is your private key phrase. You need to write this down either on a piece of paper. So best practice is really to um, write it on two pieces of paper, six words on each, and you give one piece of paper into a safe and another piece of paper hidden somewhere else. Um, some people um, actually split it up and put it at their parents' house and at their house. So this phrase is to access your wallet if you get locked out of your wallet or your computer dies or something happens like that. So um, that means you install a new wallet on a new computer and then using this 12 word phrase, you can actually reactivate the whole wallet and the blockchain downloads what was in the wallet. So you don't lose anything. If however you lose your phrase, you've lost the wallet. So you won't be able to get into it. So once you've put your 12 words in and it will ask you to put them back in order. So I normally screenshot mine. I've got a way of storing screenshots. So I've got the 12 words, I screenshot it. And then I make a written copy as well that goes into, um, like I've got a safe place. We actually don't have a safe, but we've got a, an area in our house where we store things like that. And um, it's just, yeah, secret compartment type thing. And um, you just need to remember that if you lose it, you're in trouble. So um, screenshotting it and storing it on your computer somewhere in a file is a, a start, it's a good thing, but you should also have a physical written backup um, piece of paper stored in the safe. And better, better to, again than that is to actually cut it in half and store half in the safe and half either at your parents' house or um, someone you can trust. All right, so and that means, so obviously when you're not worth very much money, you probably don't have to be too extreme. Um, but the more money you end up having with this, then obviously you want to be careful. All right, so um, let's just have a quick look at this. Which tokens does MetaMask support? So any Ethereum or Ethereum-based token. So ERC20, 721 is basically what all the NFTs are built on. And so it supports both of those. All right, so that's really good. Does it support collectibles like NFTs? Yes, it does. And... You can actually swap within MetaMask and you can also use a hardware wallet. So both the Tracer and the Ledger hardware wallets can actually just look, link into 
MetaMask. Now, a hardware wallet is the safest form. It's like a USB stick, um, just a much more secure one and much more sturdily built. Um, and what that basically does is it pulls the information off your computer into the USB and um, it's a special coded locked USB with a little screen on it. I actually don't have mine yet, so it's away. But um, that then goes into your safe and all your cryptocurrencies and NFTs are stored on that or the keys to those things are stored on that. So very cool. So this is how it is. It just sits up here in Chrome and um, you can use that whenever you want. And it signs into websites, etc. So if I go to OpenSea, all right, so it's actually already signed in. So if I log out, all right, then when I want to log back in, I just click my ma, my MetaMask, and it's already connected me back in. So now I can just go to my profile. And those are my MetaMask, sign in. And then it um, checks the actual checks the actual wallet for you. And let's just presume that like all new mask, uh, new wallets, it's not going to actually have money in it. So um, you've got to get money to it. Now, I'm in Australia and Australia is extraordinarily strict on how money is tracked in and out and what we call on ramps. So going, putting money up onto the blockchain. The Australian government has deals with all the people um, who actually run the on ramps. So getting your fiat currency, the money you get paid each week or the Australian dollar. So this is the same, so fiat currency is the country's actual currency. And the Australian dollar, anything in Australian dollars going up onto um, one of the major exchanges, so I use Binance. Um, the government has a deal with Binance where Binance, at any time that the government asks, will supply the government with exactly how much money I've put up. So make sure you keep track of your taxes and stuff, because. Um, it'd be crazy to make a lot of money in, in crypto, cryptocurrency or in NFTs and then actually find out that you had a massive tax bill and you get put in jail for not paying your taxes or at the, at the least fined. So this is, um, this is inside my Binance account. So I've just transferred $2,000 Australian up here and I'm going to send it across to my wallet in the morning. It's what time is it now? It's very early in the morning at the moment. It's 3.32. Um, but at five o'clock there's a drop happening and I want to actually buy a couple of those um, drops so I want to cash this up for money. So first thing we have to do is we have to actually buy some Ethereum. OpenSea is sort of like an eBay for NFTs. So they, they accept Ethereum and they use the MetaMask wallet to interact with the site. So what I do here is I want to spend all of my money so we'll take the whole two thousand dollars we'll change this from bitcoin to ethereum all right so ethereum's currently four thousand four hundred ninety two australian dollars so we're going to get just under half an ethereum um so then we continue and here's the breakdown of what we're getting we're turning our two thousand australian dollars into 0.445 ethereum Am I happy with that? I've got 51 seconds to confirm. And if I don't confirm in this time, this price can change because the crypto market is up and down so much. So I'll confirm. Now, when you start doing this, my suggestion would always be start with small amounts of money because it is hair, well, not for me because I've got no hair, but it is hair raising when you do this the first couple of times because your money leaves and then it vanishes and it is missing in action and it can be missing in action for hours sometimes. So it's frightening. So especially with large sums of money. So um, I've sort of done it enough now where I'm sort of fairly comfortable. All right, so now I go to my wallet in Binance and um, 
So I come down to ETH. Now I want to withdraw this ETH out of my Binance account and I want to send it to my MetaMask. So the first thing I do is I click on my MetaMask and I get my wallet address. So that's up here. Now you've just got to, in, in your MetaMask, you have different wallets. So some coins are on the Binance Smart Chain Net or, or Main Net. So I don't want it, I can't send Ethereum to this because that's built for Binance. I've got to make sure I'm actually in my Ethereum Main Net. And if you just think of these sort of like lanes on a highway, this lane is just for Ethereum. Um, or if you think of it like pipes, this one's for water, this one's for gas, this one's for um, oil. So you can't mix them. So you must just make sure you've got the right one. So we're going to send Ethereum. So I'm going to be on the Ethereum mainnet. And so I get my, co I copy this to a clipboard and I can just close that now. So now on my clipboard, I've actually got my wallet address, what we call my public address. So anyone can see that. They can't take my money if they see that. Um, and basically we're going to deposit it. So we come to ETH, we withdraw and we enter the address in here. All right, so that's my address. And then we select the network. So um, the Ethereum network right now is congested. So now there's actually a little thing you can get. This little thing up here, this is really cool. It's called Gas Now, it's just a Chrome. And it tells me what the, um, the gas is on Ethereum right now. So this is, um, this is not what you pay. You actually pay, um, so this is 39 guai or guay that you pay. So it's 41 times this. So 42 times this, that's, that's how much I'm going to lose transferring my Ethereum across. So, um, but that's the price of doing business in blockchain at the moment. All right, so once I've done that, um, I, I'm going to send my max, my max ETH across all that I can, and then I click withdraw. So just always double check this stuff. Now I know my wallet address, my public key ends in 945C, so I know that's the correct wallet. I'm definitely sending Ethereum ERC20, which is the actual Ethereum blockchain. And so the address is correct. Right, so now I've got my Binance account set up to actually make sure that if someone actually got into my account, they cannot actually get my stuff. So it sends an, a, a um, code to my email. So then I can just check my code. And so this is a random code generated each time. So it changes every single time and you need my email address to actually access that. And then on top of that, I've added Google double, authentic um, double authentication. So now I get a random number generated by Google. And now that verifies and I can submit that. All right, so the, the request is submitted and we're waiting approval. Now it says it can take approximately 12 hours. This, this will happen in a few minutes. So you can just push complete here. All right, and what we're waiting for we'll actually get an email that will say um, the withdrawal is successful. So Binance will send me an email. Binance has also sent me an email saying someone's taking money out of my account or ETH out of my account. So I have a, a confirmation. So if anyone did somehow get in and know my email or whatever, I'd still be told and I can actually go straight into Binance and shut it down. So it's very, very well backed up. All right, so I've turned my, so it's turned up in my wallet now. So I've turned my um, 2000 Australian dollars. This is the trouble with living in Australia. When we convert our Australian dollars to American dollars, we lose 
quite a bit. So my two thousand Australian dollars minus my gas fees has ended up I've, I've ended up with sixteen hundred and forty three, or point five one six nine of an ETH. So just over half an ETH into my wallet. So now my wallet is primed, and now I can go onto OpenSea and actually use that to to buy something. Okay, so I'm the old bull. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe, and um, I'll see you next time. Cheers.